and weird, but really, if you get to thinking about it, um, there's a there's a great deal to be to be thankful for. Um, not just tomorrow, but uh, all the time. This year, you know, maybe not as good as you want. I can think of some other years. Cindy and I, since we've been married, that probably would uh, would rank even lower for us personally. So. You know, there are still some things that we need to be thankful for. We need to keep that in mind. It's a matter of perspective about where we are. Um, we've got eternal salvation one day. Again, something that um, we all, all hold dear. And even in this life, every good and perfect gift that we have, just too much. But what I want to look at quickly, and then we're gonna, we'll go around and we'll talk, and everybody can share their thoughts on being thankful. But if you would, open your Bibles up to, um, to Luke chapter 17. I'm going to look at a it's one of my favorite stories. I know it seems like every time I get up here, I always say it's one of my favorite stories. I guess I just got a lot of favorite stories. Um, but this is this is one of my favorites. And it's short. Most of the stories that, that I, I, I tend to like are, are kind of short and to the point. This one, and I like the ones too, especially where Jesus is dealing with people on a warm, face-to-face, one-on-one, personal level. Uh, his lessons to masses, that's great. Sometimes you get so much more out of this having this personal stuff. This is a story that should be familiar to all of us. We're going to read it. I'll come back and just talk about a few things and we'll we'll go around the room and everybody can share their thoughts. Now, <clears throat> on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going to a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. And Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Why, where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go, your faith has made you well. I don't know why Jesus, the writer, Luke, points out that he was traveling along the border um, of Samaria. I don't know if there's any significance to that. But he comes across ten fellows. All ten of these fellows all share a common lot. They all have leprosy. And um, leprosy, it, for those of you who maybe have not ever read up on it, and there are different kinds of leprosy, but the ones that in particular and the ones that being referred to here is pretty rough. Um, basically, um, you, your body just kind of dies around you. You just kind of rot away. Pieces fall off. It's horrible, absolutely horrible. There's still places in the world where leprosy is, is still pretty common. In India, there's a lot of uh, leper colonies in, in India. So these fellows have, have a horrible disease. Back in the old law, um, there were laws governing leprosy and quarantine. Uh, an isolation to keep uh, lepers from the general population. Uh, one of the things, remember, what's one of the things they were supposed to say if anybody was coming up to them? Unclean. I'm unclean. I'm unclean. Uh, they were also, um, even within their own <coughs> ranks of leper colonies, um, coverings over their mouths were required. Does it sound familiar? Um, you know, it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing that um, you know, 2,000 years ago, or even before that. Um, God and his infinite wisdom saw the necessity and even the, the um, wisdom of isolation and quarantine when there's a disease present. Fortunately, that doesn't seem like that's maybe, anyway, that's a whole other lesson. There are lessons to be learned from that. But the lesson here is, they, they came to Jesus and evidently they were close enough to him to recognize or they had heard who he was because they, they, they identified as Jesus. And they, they recognized him as, as Lord. And what did they ask for? You have pity on us. Um, did they ask to be cleansed of their leprosy? You know, a lot of times people, Jesus gave people things that didn't specifically ask for. Um, there was the blind fellow in particular, too, when Jesus asked, what do you want me to do for you? Well, you know, I'm blind, that'd be kind of nice. But these fellows asked um, to be, for Jesus to have pity on And um, he says something again, and it's in keeping, because Jesus, even though he was accused by the Pharisees of, of breaking the old law, Jesus never did, never did. Under old law, you know what lepers were supposed to do? 
Uh, especially if they thought they had been cleansed and the leprosy had been dry for a certain period of time. You know who they want to show themselves to? The priest. So he tells them, you go show yourself to the priest. Now, when were they cleansed? On the way. They were cleansed on the way. So I don't know if while they were walking, I don't know if it was a half mile down the road, a mile down the road, how far down the road it was, they got to look and say, hey, you know something? We don't have leprosy anymore. Now, there's something... This is something, too, that you got to keep in mind. All right. There's ten of these guys. All ten of them shared what? They all showed leprosy. Jesus told all ten of them to go show themselves to who? The priest. The priest. What, what priest do you think he was referring to? Jewish priest. Okay. Where does that lead to Samaritan? Now, they all have something in common, just like we do. Going somewhere, this they're all walking on their way, and all ten of them were cleansed. Where do you think the other nine Jews went? If they did what Jesus said, where did they go? Priest. They went to the priest. Where did the Samaritan have to go? See, it's amazing they all share a common lot up until they were all cleansed. And as soon as they were all cleansed, we're going to put that distinction back again. You're a Samaritan, we're all clean now. We're going to show ourselves to the priest. The Samaritan, that wasn't an option for him. The Samaritan was going to go sashaying in to see a Jewish priest. What's going to happen? So you could say by necessity, or you could say by virtue of the fact that he really realized who had cleansed him because they hadn't seen the priest yet. He was cleansed on the way. He turns right around, and he goes back to Jesus. Jesus immediately picks up on him. What does he say about the other nine? Where are they? Well, he told them to go see the priest, right? Jesus gives credit to this guy. I think he gives credit to this guy. Um, he doesn't give him a pass for being a Samaritan or, or a religious error, but he does give him credit for his faith. He makes it pretty plain that your faith, your, your faith has made you whole. Maybe the other nine, maybe he makes a contrast there and between the other nine, I don't know. But he makes it pretty plain that this guy deserves credit for coming back and thanking this story like so many others Jesus um, himself to God and tries to convey to his followers then and now there has to be some kind of spirit of thankfulness and giving credit where credit is due uh, and we don't do that a lot of times you know there will be a lot of people y'all tomorrow that will meet for, um, for thanksgiving and um they will go around the table even and say the things that they're thankful for. But they don't necessarily give God credit for that. I know people like that. They'll have Thanksgiving. I said before, <laughs> it's one of my favorite movies. And I probably used the example too many times. But in the movie, Shannon Noel and Jimmy Stewart are sitting around the table. And um, at the first of the movie, and they're eating their, all their corn and taters and stuff. And his prayer to God was, you know, well, thank you, God. You know, he says, you know, we planted it, we, we reaped it, we cooked it, and thank you anyway. Basically, it was his prayer. Of course, as the movie goes on, and he he has some terrible hardships, toward the end, um, he has a little bit different perspective on things. If you've never seen the movie, how many of y'all ever seen the movie? Oh, that's a great movie. He tries to keep his family out of the Civil War, and they just... Anyway, it's a really good movie. You've never one of Jimmy Stewart. I think one of his best one of the best parts he ever played. But anyway, the, the, his 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 role in there is kind of like a lot of people have today, and we do it too. Um, instead of giving God the glory or giving God the thanks, the Samaritan knew better. He knew who had cleansed him without that. And if you think about us today, whether it's leprosy or just sin in general, we all share the same disease. We all do. We all share the same disease. It's important for us to have the same spirit, though, of the Samaritan and not the other nine and realize that Jesus Christ is the one that's going to, he's the one that's going to heal you. He's the one you need to be thankful for. Not a priest, not somebody else, just him. It's important for us. I, I think Jesus makes sure that this guy, and this is recorded for us to learn. Um, just another case of where a Samaritan actually uh, acts better and behaves better than Jesus' own people did. Anybody have anything else? Because I was going to go around the room and share some thoughts. It's just a good story. Uh, it's, it's, it's just a classic example of, of Jesus trying to teach his people and us too. I don't know what will come of the other nine. 
I don't think they were punished in any way. But, um, anyway. What do y'all got to be thankful for tomorrow? Anyway. I got a call this morning about Mark Crusher. Some of y'all weren't here. I lost a friend of mine I worked with for I had close to 30 years at the airport. I knew he had been sick, but I didn't think it was. Anyway, he passed away yesterday, COVID. So he was, um, Mark Crusher was his name. He was, he was a good fellow. So three months in the hospital with him. That was a long time. But yeah, health right now, for sure. I'd be thankful just for my family's health. Well, they only work two. I mean, I've got two people on our street alone that have lost jobs, and one of them maybe lives in North Carolina, and uh, one of the others they're throwing boxes at Amazon to the family business or whatever. Yeah. A lot of folks right now are suffering financially, horribly so, you know, <coughs> all over the country. But, but around here, I know, I know probably half a dozen. Fortunately, most of the fellas that I know at the airport, they've all hung on to their, to their jobs. Get, get a lot of stuff caught up where there's not as much air traffic. So they're, everyone I've talked to, they're, they're tipping the death of where they are and still, got, still have a job. So some of the contract services people know they've been laid off. They're laid off for probably six, seven months now. You got a lot of folks hurt in that regard too. I don't see it. How does that many people still work? The traffic is what, um, I know people drive back and forth, and I, that's one of the things I'm thankful for, I don't have to make that drive anymore. But um, Monday, me and Cindy, we, we, went to, we went to Mount Juliet down um, like an idiot. Uh, I, I got out on the interstate, and this was going into Nashville. I'm like, are you kidding me? Uh, the idiot got, but yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, where am I? Like, Everybody's moving around, somebody's working, or Doing something, the traffic didn't seem to have subsided in any sense before the pandemic. And Highway 70, of course, and everybody's done this at works in Nashville. I'm like, well, that's old Highway 70. Man, that was really smart. You know, on Mount Julie Road. You get that section there between Bender's Ferry and Mount Julie, you can forget that. Um, you know, you got four lanes. This is an awful subject, but it tickles me. The area of four lanes on Highway 70, where there is no traffic, it goes down, bottlenecks down to two lanes when you're on riding Mount Julie. Explain that to me. I don't understand that. Uh, the Wilson County thing. Yeah, I don't get it. Where you drive Wilson County, Harvard Drive. Well, Harvard Pike. They wide Harvard Pike for four lanes and drop the speed limit. And it goes up to 55, but it goes back to two lanes at our road. I don't the, get it. The, the four lanes to nowhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I'm, I'm thankful we don't have to deal with that here. I was, my parents, uh, I called them the other day and I said, look, you know, we don't want to expose you guys, so maybe we won't have Thanksgiving dinner. And, you know, and so they're like, well, we'll, we'll just go out to eat. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you know, no, no, don't do that. Don't do that. And I said, look, if you're insistent on eating, I said, well, just, just, just come on over there. Yeah, you're going to go out and do that. <laughs> he, they, just, they just think that, you know, it's a risk, and, and they, neither one of them. Believe me, neither one of them can afford to have it. Yeah. Well, mom and dad, but this is the first Thanksgiving. I try telling you, 80 year old parents what to do, so. Oh, I've tried that. <laughs> yeah, I don't try that anymore. No. But they did agree, of course, you know. Um, but we're not, this would be the first uh, Thanksgiving that we've not gone to anybody. Because there would be like 30 people, maybe more, that all show up at mom and dad's house, and they're just, they're just not, they're just not smart. Especially the youngins and stuff, and mom and dad, their age, and dad, bless his heart, he had a bout of something a couple of weeks ago. Thankfully, it wasn't COVID, but he couldn't hardly breathe. So, you know, they're not. You know, is he better? He is. He's better now. Yeah, I, I was telling everybody, I guess it was last Wednesday night, I, um, I took him a chicken biscuit from Harvey. He was boy, that thing out like the Lord. <laughs> so, yeah, he was, he was better. He liked the chicken biscuit. So, he's doing, he's doing okay. Yeah, we're not, we're not going to be seeing the other going to have something. That's love. The wild man wound up. He is healthy as he can be alive. 
When I went out there, no, I'll find out when we get home. I know she was putting the mixer. She she got this big. It looks like a like a fifty horse Johnson Super C horse motor, but it, it's one of the big, really nice blenders. KitchenAid. So finally got for one year. I think she used it like three times. I think cost like a thousand dollars or something. <laughs> Seriously, it's a big steel thing. It takes up half of our cat. Anyway, I know she was putting it over there, and I know Tucker was standing there, and I heard it come on, and I heard. No, no, no. <laughs> You run out the door. Oh, I was running out the car. So he had dropped it over in there and turned it on before he was ready or something. But I'm sure that we'll find out when I get home. We'll find out tomorrow. <laughs> we go home late tonight. No, nah, she had a big old thing of battery in there. He probably turned it on, swung it all over. Turn it all over. You can't turn your back on, dude. What else we got? Yeah, Mike. Yeah, I was extremely thankful. Just very thankful that you know, within a week I had another job. I could work as many hours as I want to. And not just that, I mean, money is great, but the people, I mean, you know, you, you never know what kind of people you're going to run into when you start a new job. And I made friends with some, some really neat people, people from all different cultures. Yeah. And just some really nice guys that are willing to show me how to do the job and just extremely friendly. It's, yeah, showing up to, I guess, younger folks will be a new school, but you know, mm -hmm. older folks, a new job is, um, yeah, of course, after I got out of construction, I stayed at the airport forever, so I was always the old one there. When new people come in, I'd be the one who out for them. No, I was, I was not, especially the young ones. Uh, I'd try to show them stuff. Some of them didn't want to learn. I don't cut it to them. You know, I don't, I'll teach anybody. Don't come in there and try to tell me my job. Especially <laughs> when I've been doing it for 33 years. Yeah, yeah. You're punk. <laughs> Why do you do it that way, folks? Yeah. Why are you doing it that way? You know, if it's a good idea and it's new and it's, it works better, fine. You know, you know. This has nothing to do with being fine, but this is just me. I think we've lost a whole generation of people who can work and fix things. Can't fix it with a laptop or a keyscope that can't be fixed. Okay? I'm just telling you. I, I, I work with some of them. You know, kind of like, they got great ideas on that kind of stuff, but you know, somebody's got to go out and bust a knuckle or turn a wrench sometime. You can't just do it all the time like this. That don't work. I had a guy one time, <laughs> it was an energy management system, and all the air handlers in the airport had a graphic for all the air handlers. Well, it would turn different colors and stuff. It would show you the temperature and the water flow through the coils and everything. Well, we had these people call from America. I never forget call from American Airlines. They've been calling me for like two days. It's hot up here. It's hot up here. Well, this boy, he'd been sitting down there in the boardroom. He looked up and said, No, it shows here, you know. Okay, well, finally, uh, on the second shift one night, I said, well, I think I'm just going to go up and check. The belts were all promoted. Now, the points attached to his control point. Dokey dokey, but it don't run if there's no belts on the motor. So, you know, another story. You can't fix everything with a poofy dog. <laughs> In fact, I think a lot of people find come to terms with that. What else we got to be thankful for? Stop doing it. I'm thankful for the church here. You know, we got a hard end of last year. You know, yeah. the end of this year, not with COVID, but with other things. Yeah. The community and the elders. People in the church have really Amen. stuck it out. Yeah, we kind of started out, we started out on a rocky road and just got rockier. But um, I will say this, and um, some of you know have friends and neighbors too that worship at different houses of worship all over the county. Um, we're trying pretty good. There's a lot of our, our, our sister congregations like that. They're, they're hurt uh, on, on many levels. So. But God's been good to us. I mean, you're exactly right. I agree. I mean, you know what God said about uh, starting out with a being thankful for a leadership mm -hmm. and starting out rough and then we carry on like that. You don't know how thankful I can speak for all the elders. <coughs> you 
you don't know how thankful we are that we have a congregation that that is receptive to the changes that's been on and been supporting to us. You don't know how thankful we are that the people have been yeah. supporting to us. Well, I know I, I've been privy to sitting on some of y'all meetings, and I know none of the decisions you've made in the last few months, especially, have been made lightly by any of them on, on any of the subjects. So um, that's the way it should be. It's just a matter of day-to-day -day operations and stuff. Um, there should be support. You know, critical matters. Well, I haven't heard anything or anything like that even pop up. I, I, I mean, maybe I'm ignorant to it, but I think most most everybody here sitting down the same hymnal as far as that goes. And that's the main thing. You keep that square. Everything else should just fall into place. Okay. That's easier said. <laughs> that's easier said than done. Apparently, yeah. but anyway. No, it's just. Uh, I don't think we've had any outbreak, COVID outbreaks originate from here. I don't know for a fact, but uh, I'm very thankful for that. Yeah. And everyone I can think of has recovered for the most part. Yeah. That's something to be thankful for. Yeah. You know, so I'm getting pretty sick, but at least, you know, yeah. as far as I know, everybody's uh, no birth were, were pretty sick. I think yeah. the are pretty sick. Yeah. Um, the plums, there's been some. But you look at the plumbies, odds are yeah. pretty much against them. I don't know how they. Well, thankfully, um, as this thing has progressed, and this is just an opinion, it's like any other issue or problem that you're grappling with. If you if you deal with it long enough, you learn as you go. Yeah. Um, there are certain things that come to light that they really can't come to light except just by virtue of dealing with it and and seeing it. Um, once you build some kind of historical, you know, looking back, I know this works, I know this don't work, just then you get a little bit better handle on it. And I think that's been showing up too. But, yeah. Um, like vitamin D, they're saying now that people that are vitamin D deficient have a much greater chance of little things like I, that. I, I know that. Now, there'll be a lot of things too, you know, that probably years from now they'll still be coming yeah. out with. And you know, there's even things that um, diseases in times past. You say a, a report or something come out on something that you know they thought they had nailed down pretty good, but research has changed a lot. And you know, the more you learn, and well, that's, that's how they discovered the cure to. I think it was smallpox. These milkmaids would milking cows that had it, mm -hmm. and the scabs would, and that, and they noticed when it came through, these milkmaids never got it. They never got it. So, I read that. Where did you see it? Was that on I saw that on History Channel. Uh, I don't know if that was. They had a series on diseases about long as about how it originated. I think it was maybe a really good series in college when I was in nursing school. How they figured out where the plague actually came from. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's anyway. I think that um, the more you deal with it, I, I think it's already. Uh, not, I don't want to minimize. Like I said I, I just lost a pretty close friend of mine, but um, I think maybe now the survival rate's a little bit. A little bit better. I hope so. I know they learned a lot. And they'll continue to learn. That's what people are supposed to do anyway. Hey, Dad. You'd be thankful if you could become a full time preacher. <laughs> no, we can't have that. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing the best I can. That's what we're doing, brother. You know, the hand I got dealt me. I, I, I like preaching, but it's just not something I want to do all the time. It's kind of like hunting and fishing. If you had to do it for a living, it probably would be like fun. <laughs> Oh, man, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I love, like I said, I love fishing, but like this morning, if I thought I had to get up and go to the lake and fish, I don't want to. <laughs> so, oh, man. Sometimes you do things as, you know, as a, as some of us are off the same way. <laughs> Golf. You're off the same way. I thought I'd never get tired of play 64 rounds. Yes. Yeah. Because I was retired in the spring. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like anything else. You know, I, I enjoyed uh, my job at the airport for many, many years, but all good things come to an end. There's all good things come to an end, and thankfully, all bad things come to an end. So. I always think I'm going to enjoy golf until I start playing. And then I realize I hate it. I'm just not good at it, you know? Well, I'm just, 
I never have. I don't want to know anything. I don't want to know about all the first thing about it. So. Yeah, I'm not very, I don't need it. I, only I know about it is I can always get a ride. <laughs> I can always get a ride out of Sydney Saturday. It was a lot on, and she was walking back and forth. And, you know, she was, anyway, I, I put it on golf. I don't want to know about golf, but I know she hates it. So I put it on golf, and I'm sitting back there watching. She came walking through. She walked through there once. She's probably watching this one. And then she goes back back. And she walks back through again. She said, what are you doing? I might take this up. <laughs> <laughs> Just know you're not. It's not like watching it. That's all I hate. Now, I, I, you know, I know if you like golf, I'm sure it's great. That's got to be the most boring thing I believe I've ever seen. Oh, you're going to take a nap to it. Yeah. Turn it on, I'm ready to take a nap. Yeah. <laughs> Whispering, talking real soft. Yeah. 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 It's a real sport. Yeah. It's a real sport. Yeah. Yeah. It's a real sport. Yeah. I don't even know if you've watched it. I can't have done it, but I'm going to do something. Yeah, I, the, the church here, and um, I'm thankful for lessons Kevin's been bringing. Um, uh, you know, here's something that, that I have been thankful for just in the last six or seven months. Forgetting about the, you know, the sickness and, and some of the things that seem to drag 2020 down. And this is something I've been thankful for. Uh, <laughs> this seems again like a gimme, but just but hearing a lesson um, from the pulpit backed up the scripture. Amen. Now that seems like a given. I'm going to tell y'all it's not a given. Uh, it's just not. And. Uh, People, um, people. After a while, if, if you're not used to, to hearing it, or you're falling out of a habit of study or hearing it, you don't realize how maybe malnourished you are until you hear one and you're like, "Wow, I haven't even heard one like that in a while." And, and it's it's a it's an alarm bell, frankly. Now, um, having said that, it's it's hard to maintain that level. Of interest, you know, a starving person they get real, real hungry. Uh, they, they're looking for something like that. When they see it, they really appreciate it. You know, if you're getting fed a pretty good diet of that, oh, you, you, you tend to take it for granted. I think the challenge we're going to have here at Berea, and, and, and again, it's a good thing to have. Don't don't grow complacent in if you're hearing good lessons and, and you're being fed spiritually by the scripture. Don't take that for granted. It's it's something that um, you've got to have. In order to maintain a, um, a, a viable congregation and be able to preach the gospel, it is so easy to fall off to fall off the mark and forget why we're here, where where we get our doctrine, why we, we teach what we teach. Um, there was a saying uh, I can't remember who, who coined the phrase, but the church is always just one generation away from apostasy. They're always one generation away, and it's so easy. Fall aside. And I've shared with y'all before sometimes when I would uh, fill in teaching in the back, um, disturbed sometimes by some of our little ones. You know, Kevin mentioned Sunday morning about a little fellow on the ball team never heard of Noah. Let me tell you something you don't have to go to a ball team to really ball team. Um, I've had some pretty disturbing things said right here back in the Bible class in the last few years from kids that have grown up with Christian parents that was disturbing, their ignorance of the Bible, very disturbing. And, um, you know, here's the deal, y'all. <laughs> Our Bible school teaches every bit as they can, uh, but ultimately, if you have a child, a grandchild, well, whose responsibility is to make sure those young ones are taught? It's yours. And don't pawn it off on these people back here. Don't pawn it off on the public school system. Um, I don't want them teaching my child the Bible. I don't want that. Um, it's our so if, if there's um, if there's an apostasy or falling away, there's a reason for that. Um, yeah, I'm telling you, I won't say who, but some of the things that, that um, I found shocking. Uh, even here, this is something too. How many of y'all, when you like me, uh, in Bible study, uh, learn the books of the New Testament by say? Actually, I, I probably didn't know even before going to school, but at least by the first grade. I'm going to tell you, you've got high schoolers back right now who do not know the books of the Old Testament. Don't know. If they're, if they're 
your Bibles, the pages aren't numbered, they can't find it, ask them to look up here, they can't find it. Let's go to the Old Testament. That may seem like one. Maybe you think I'm, I'm being picky. I'm going to tell you something. Um, if your youngins can't use their Bible effectively, be able to look up um, passages, they're hamstrung from the start. Hamstrung from the very start. And that's, I can remember my grandmother, um, I, I practically lived over their house in the summertime, but she, she drilled me on mine. Uh, that'd be King James. That was the only version. But she would drill me. She would make sure. And my Bible school lesson for the next morning before I went to bed and now Lake Hill was my, was my teacher. Um, I had a book. My dad checked, make sure I had my lesson before I went in there. Those days, long since past. And we're reaping, we're reaping. We want to blame everybody and everything else for it, but that's not where it's coming from, y'all. Not where it's coming from. It's coming from years of neglect and letting the world take up the time. And I, 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 again, I know it's, it's, it's hard to do, but boy, stressing those matters. You know, we, we make sure that we want our kids to get a good education, go out and get a job, make lots of money. Somewhere along the line, we lost it. We lost the emphasis on it. On Christ. Thank you for paying for it. I really do. That's just me. What else we got to be thankful for? So be thankful for a good a good lesson at least, you know, once or twice a week that um, is thought provoking and might make you always examine yourself in the light of scriptures and, and where you stand. Pretty important. What else? Along with the sickness and health things, God makes you thankful that we and live in a part of the, the world and country where we do have as good medical care as is, is probably anywhere in the world. Well, there's a lot of folks who don't have that. They don't, they don't have access to that. So if we have that, pray for um, the people who work in those places every day. They got a, they got a terrible, terrible hand to have them right now. It's rough. It's bad. And some of them are just just want to know, um, depressed, borderline suicidal, just, you know, having to be family member, confessioner, and everything else, with people dying in front of them, it's, it's, it's tough on them. I'm thankful for my family. But some of you I know uh, don't have your mom and dad anymore, but I still got mine. Uh, I never would have thought 20 years ago that my dad would still be alive. He had some reports out there by Rome. He's he's still alive. He's still alive and kicking. Uh, yeah, he's still kicking. But he's still he's <laughs> he's still still around. So I'm like his that. Lost his hearing aid. And money. Yeah, they call me and I'm like, I I can't find him. I'm over here. I'm 40 miles away. So I wrote a book everywhere. I'm like, you want me to suggest some places to look? Or, anyway, to make a long story short, they got um, the neighbor came over. They called her. She came over. She then she gets her boy over there to crawl around in her bed. And I'm, they're good neighbors, you know. I, but I'm sure they're thinking, you know, what is the deal with this? This makes like a tent. The VA has replaced his hearing aids. They've been really good. Now, I know that you hear a lot of times VA take a bad rap, but the VA has been really good in my day. They really have. I don't know how many hearing aids they bought for him. He loses them all the time. And um, in, his, in his teeth sometimes, loses them. <laughs> so, <laughs> when we turn this thing off up here, and I'll tell you a story about losing a tooth up in the mountains at the ice cream parlor in Alice Mountain, but I ain't telling you now. Uh, so, but I'm thankful that we still. We don't have a needle. We have way to die. There's plenty. <laughs> and tomorrow will come and go just like every other Thanksgiving. Maybe next year we'll have something, something a little bit different to, to talk about. I know there'll be, there'll be Thanksgiving this year. I think about y'all. This will be a hard one. See his family this year. Cindy, see, she's lost both of her. She lost her dad when she's 11. And of course, lost her mom about seven years ago. First holidays, her and her mom were super close. They were really, really close because she was so young and 
Kathy over the last 15 years the difference between seeing Kathy and Lacey, she was gone. So, and uh, Paul and I, being in the different, they were, they were going to the hill. So, they were close. I didn't have to deal with that. Lee, uh, this happens a lot of times when people you love pass away like that. But about the time you stop thinking, or, you know, it doesn't just occupy every minute. Something will happen, and, and I'll think, well, I need to go over there and you know, and then you go, oh, I forgot. Yeah. And that just happens a lot. Tim does that. Yeah. Even now, it's been a pretty good while. Something happened, you know, should I show up? I'm going to talk to my mom yeah. about that. Yeah. Because there's some things that you just can't talk about sometimes. You know, you don't feel much about it. So it's pretty crazy. So there's, like I said, there's, th there's things to be thankful for that, that I can have that some of you have already lost. And it's just important, you know, to remember that things could be, could be different. I don't have a, a song for you. I don't know if anybody here has anything they need prayers about. Um, hard times, but um, good times too. A lot of things to be thankful for. Uh, but again, one of the things that I am thankful for that members have asked me from the church that we can pray for one another, uh, for each other's healing, for each other's comfort. Um, kind of on what Jack was saying there, whether it's a uh, financial hardship or physical hardship or whatever, one of the things that um, that I'm seeing or hearing from people that I know, not necessarily just here at the church, is pray for people's mental well-being. There's, um, we don't pray for that enough. You know, mental illness and stress and just just an overwhelming anxiety, it, it's, it's really prevalent right now. There are people that are really, really struggling with that. Um, saw some disturbing numbers. It was already bad with teenagers even before that event, but now it's just a, it's probably as bad as it's ever been. There are kids out there that are just, they're just at wit's end. They don't have any kind of support. They don't have any kind of community, sense of community anymore. They're really hurt. And, and, um, and older people too. Uh, Mom and dad, you know, they've been isolated for a long time. It's hard on them. I don't like to get out, and, and she does. I know she's gone out and, and had her hair done. I know she's done that. She told me she's gone to the store. But she, for her, she's, in her mind, she's isolated, pretty much. So there are a lot of people that are hurt in that regard, too. So we need to remember them um, here at Berea, and wherever you happen to be at school, or work, wherever, remember those folks, too. So I don't know if you got any kind of um, need for prayer, you can make mention of that. We don't necessarily have to have a, a song. We're going to pray for some folks, and um, we'll have a prayer again here in just a minute. Ronnie, you listen to prayer, but if you have somebody need to make mention of, now's the time to do it. I hope everybody comes today tomorrow is the best one ever. Whatever you make of it. Well, you've got to steal the idea that you can throw it out there. So sure. You know, we've got some of our members that, that are not comfortable coming, uh, mask or not mask. I wonder if we, you know, there's, they'd come and we'd say, hey, look, we're going to have a special service where there's five couples in the room, you know, or set it up to where they knew that they would be a very, very wide distance. Probably. Just something to think about. Yeah, we, I think we're losing people coming to the building. Yeah, I know probably half a dozen couples that they either they're not going to come. They don't get out either. They don't go anywhere. But you're, I don't know. It's just something the elders could have to try to touch base with them and see, make a special provision, uh, extra cautious. Stan I'm leads in singing, so would be good. Say what? Stan leads singing, so that'd be good. Well, I'll bring him. I'll bring him in. <laughs> <laughs> Stan does a good job. Yeah. He's he's sitting down on Sunday. He just doesn't know yet. What? I'm preaching preach Sunday, so I was wanting him to do, so. him to do it here Sunday. I'm preaching here. <laughs> No, um, I tell you what we can be thankful for. And I see it every day. We can be thankful that there is a God and that we have hope beyond what we're dealing with right now in life. We were rocking along, everything was cool. And this year's been a hour for a lot of us. And I look at other people, and you're talking about the mental illness, they don't have that hope. I 
think that's what they're missing. That's a lot what, of them, yeah. where we can keep our sanity is yeah. in that. Yeah. One day, I, there's a lot of argument about what happens after you die and all that kind of stuff, but we know it's good one way or another. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, to me, you know, people can look down on what they want to, but you're exactly right. There have been times in my life, even before this year, I'm telling you, there have been some years that me and Cindy just personally are worse than this year by far. And had I not had um, y'all here um, to fall back on and and just just the word of God and prayer, I wouldn't make it. I'm going to tell you, I mean, people could say, yeah, you create it, whatever. Let me tell you something. This is something I have learned. I'm just 60. Some of you are older than me. Some of you are older than me. See if you can verify this. What I have learned is this. If you deal with somebody, and I've worked with people for 30 years, some of them that say they're atheists, some of them that, but what I picked up on every one of them is, is this, everybody has a crutch. Everybody. Now, you can choose your crutch. You can choose alcohol, or you can, you can choose whatever, uh, sexual immorality, or whatever you want to choose. Everybody has a crutch. Anybody says otherwise is a liar. I have seen it. I've seen it too many times. If you're exposed to somebody long enough, you'll figure out what their crutch is because they'll tell you. So, I choose my crutch to be Jesus Christ. That's what I'm picking. Nobody else can pick anything they want to pick. But I've got pretty good confidence in mine. Everybody, but everybody has one. You're, you're, you're right, Stan. There have been times without it. Um, no hope. No hope. So you can pick a person, or you can pick a drug, or you can pick alcohol. I'm going to tell you something. Gonna have it, and eventually, eventually, it's gonna let you down if you pick anything else other than that. I've, I've seen too many people. In fact, I've been one of those other people. I know. So, uh, after a while, uh, if God gives you the, the grace to come back, thankfully. So, and, and again, y'all may not have seen that with some folks, but I have. Especially if you're really struggling with something. How many of y'all ever had this? How many of y'all ever had somebody at work who doesn't go to church, maybe don't live their life, maybe even just been outright openly hostile to anything religious or otherwise? But then after you work with them 5, 10, 15, 20 years, something, something happens. Illness of the Maybe then, maybe a child, something goes down. Have you ever had one of them come to you and ask, ask you to pray for them? That's more common. So, you know, and even before that, you know, maybe just weeks before that, you might have had a heated conversation about why do you believe in God, blah, 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 and then all of a sudden, you're the go-to person all of a sudden. So, I've seen that happen. That happened. Just be that person that people feel like they can come to. I'm not saying that person necessarily is going to all of a sudden roll over and, you know, praise the Lord and come to church, but but they do know that there's something better. You're right. If this is as good as it gets, you know, what did Paul say? If, uh, if this is all there is, we're all the men the most miserable in that thin young person. If this is it, well, this is it. Ooh, that's bad. Anybody have anything else to have a thing for you to pray for? Ryan, are you listening to prayer? <coughs> Most kind of gracious Father, Lord, we we come to you this evening thanking you, Lord, for for this country that we live in. We want to thank you, Lord, for for being the ruler over all nations. Lord, we want to thank you for for giving your Son Jesus that we can have peace and understanding after. And Lord, we want, we want to ask you to be with each and every one of us as we celebrate through this Thanksgiving holiday. We know that there are many that have lost loved ones and, and that it will be brought close to their hearts at this time. There are many that have knew Lord in their lives to be brought to their hearts this time. Lord, we want you to continue to look down on us. Lord, we are asking you to be with each individual throughout this world. Give them the wisdom, Lord, to make the decisions that they need to make that will help keep 